Hello YouTubers. Um, now just a, an update on this Bosch charger. Um, we fi hopefully figured out what um, resistor has gone. It's uh, 18k 1 amp. Um, and unfortunately I don't have any. Uh, but I've got a few 18k uh, half an amp ones. Oh, sorry watts. So 18k 1 watt. Um, and I've got a few 18k uh, 0.5 watts. Um, now obviously now I've got a better camera we can actually see in there. Now that's the that was the resistor that was gone and also we had an end channel MOSFET there also which was gone and that's the back of the board there. Um, so I'll show the resistor this is the resistor that was gone so what I've done today just for uh, a quick test just to make sure it's definitely right I've ordered them they're on the way but basically I've put there's my resistors that I've got I've got, I've got four of them and two of them are in series so that both sets are in series and I've just basically soldered them together so we just basically got two legs coming out the bottom so this means I can fit it in the board and I can turn it on just to see if this is going to work because it makes sure we've got no more problems if this works then we're sorted I'll just get the right part put it in jobs done um, and this is the end channel MOSFET we're going to put that in as well so I'm going to do all that and hopefully if it works then will we know and if it doesn't now I'll have to look at other things so I'll try and zoom in here as best I can um, now that should be good enough for the minute it's going to be hard to uh, to kind of solder and look through the camera at once so I might just solder it and then kind of get it as best in view as I can and then solder it and then see see how we go now we're going to put the uh, the end channel MOSFET on first um, just need a bit of uh, heat sink here yeah, so we just put a bit of that on as well it's just thermo grease heat sink it just uh, helps everything so you don't need too much of this well having said that to be fair on this now there is a special um, a special kind of tape that does it for you so actually we don't need that heat sink see it there so what I'm going to do is get the end tile MOSFET put it down bend up the middle leg because it's just a slight different way to go in Now it's as simple as that, the little hole lines up for the bolt, so I'll just bring it up here, let's zoom in, Let focus, okay don't focus that, now you can see that the little hole lines up and then underneath It's just the three little legs there, so we'll solder them in. That's when we was taking it out. So I'm going to solder them two legs in, three legs, sorry, and this should be done for that side. So we'll just zoom out. So hopefully, now push that through to definitely make sure the hole is lining up. Maybe no harm to actually put this little bolt through first, just so you know it's, it's definitely going to line up. So this little nut and bolt you get with it, put that through. So when you solder, at least you know that, as you can see there, look, it's in the right place. You get a little nut then to go on it. I'm only going to put this hand tight for the minute, just enough to. Uh, 
to be awkward even getting that in. I'm just going to leave that there for a the minute. That'll hold itself in, and then I can solder it, and then we'll uh, put it in properly. Now I'm using. The solder I'm using is 0.3, it's really fine soldering wire, it's, it's nice soldering wire and obviously Flux, Flux is your friend, he's a good friend. So what I'm going to do is just dip this in the Flux, you, I mean, you really don't need a lot for these because they're only tiny legs. That will be my phone. So, pause it. Ah, we're back. Yeah, like I said, uh, the way I do solder, now everyone has their own, obviously, different ways and, and all that sort of stuff. I personally like to use flux, even though the, 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 the solder wire is flux, but the extra bit, and I just dip, you can't, not gonna be able to see, but I just dip the end into it because it's very small amount you need. It really does help the flow of the solder and you get a lot nicer a lot nicer solder joints at the end because you don't want any dry solder joints or anything like that also my soldering iron has a little pump on it you can see that the little second nozzle there so any any smoke that comes off, hopefully you can see that, any smoke that comes off actually gets sucked. I don't know how well that's coming through, I'll just try that again. Now you can see it there, it gets sucked into it, it's, it's great. Um, you don't need particularly need one of them if you've got um, a fan in, in the room or something like that, obviously that helps, but having having that on it really does help. But it's a bit noisy for the video, so I'm just going to leave it off for a second. Now the tip I'm using is a fine tip, um, hopefully you can again see it there, it's a really fine tip. Um, everyone has their own kind of, some people say use a thicker tip, I have different tips here now for different jobs. Um, some people like to use kind of the, the, the spade tip like that, it just depends what you're used to and it depends on the circuit board, how much room you've got and all that sort of stuff. Um, Now, you can see that where my finger is about there, that's what we've just soldered, them three on there, and they all look good. Um, and that's it, that's the end channel MOSFET on there then. So that should all be good to go. Um, now for the uh, resistor, which goes here. Again, uh, you can see where it's actually burnt all the kind of the protecting off it. We're just going to do something with that for the minute just to see if we've got this fixed or do we have other problems, other problems with it. Now I'll just show you uh, a quick thing. This is the way I solder anyway. Now I'm just, my soldering iron has been turned off. Um, the way I do it is, hopefully you can see this, you have the legs sticking out. And what you're trying to do is you put the solder iron on the back of the leg and then you leave it for a few seconds. This is just solder coming off. You leave it then for a few seconds and then you feed the wire in. You feed the wire on the opposite side to where you've put the iron. So if this is the iron, you're feeding the wire from the opposite side. 
and you like I said you just leave it for a few seconds to actually heat up the area and once you feed the wire in from the opposite side it will literally puddle around and it'll get you a nice shiny uh, soldering joint. Now we're going to move to the resistor and like I showed at the beginning this is the contraption I've got. Um, now I mean if it works you could actually leave it in, I'm not going to. Um, I'm just basically checking now to see if I need something else or do I just need that uh, resistor. The reason why I've done it this way as well is so because obviously you've only got a little bit of room so I've only got really two legs. Them two legs that's all I can really work with so we'll try and put this in the board make sure it's not touching anything and solder it more or less the same way as we just did before and uh, we'll see see how we get on yeah. Now that's it into the board, I'd assume in there, that's the two legs pushed in, I'll just flip it around so you can actually see and then you can just see the two legs sticking out there and there look. So we'll just solder them in now, obviously make sure it's not touching anything off anything once it's soldered in, which we can do after it's soldered in. So that's hopefully as simple as that. I'm just going to bend them legs slightly just so it's, I've just bent them legs down slightly just so it doesn't fall out the board as I'm soldering. Again I'm going to use flux Now I just had to do something slightly different with this solder because the a little bit of the board's got damaged so, so it's heating so I'm just I've just scraped away a little bit of the actual uh, board and I'm going to solder it into that. Um, still the same thing but the heat obviously has damaged the board. Now it's not as neat as I wanted but I'm just going to clean that up. It will get us to where we need to do what I basically want to just check with this. So we are soldered in. Not as neat as I wanted but it's in there. It's good enough for a test. So now I'm just going to basically make sure this isn't touching anything that it shouldn't do. Now hopefully you can see that, now there it is, look, turn it around, as you can see it's not touching anything. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get all the, the plastic to put it back in. Uh, I could just switch it on like that but I'm just going to put it in the plastic casing just to make sure that we have no, no problems and I don't want to touch anything just in case we do. So, here's the plastic casing, we're just going to sit it in, feed the wires through, now that's in. Now hopefully, unless there's nothing else wrong, 
I'm going to just quickly switch this on and we're hoping to see, uh, I think it's the green light that just comes on. And like I said, when I got this, nothing was coming on and it wasn't charging anything. So I'll just leave that there, plug this in. It's either going to go bang or it's going to light up. And the answer is, oh look at that, it lights up. Now hopefully you can see that. Now there it is. Now what I also do have, which is handy, I have a little um, gun here that basically, little thermostat, that you just point at. Now for the true test, let's see if it charges a battery. This is a 24 volt battery. So here it goes. Let's see if we fix it properly and not just a light flashing on it. There's a light. And there we go. See the light flashing? It's like a job in the ice street, isn't it? See that? I'll just zoom into that. So you can see that charging. There we go. There's two lights on this charger, like most chargers. One, they're normally uh, the same colour. Um, and the red one, which I'll show you now in a second. I'll just have to move this. Just turn it off for a second. So you can see, lift it up to it. Now most chargers are the same, um, the green one, obviously it shows you there, but the, the green one is normally the charge and the red one is normally when things are wrong. So the red light is normally uh, when you have a problem with the battery, like an overheating light, obviously a problem with the charger, but it's normally a problem with the battery. There's like a heat sink in the battery and if the batteries are overheating it won't charge it. And like I said, some of them are slightly different, but that's basically it. So as we can see, when you turn it on, you get the light, put the battery in, you get the flashing light. Now when that light stops flashing, like it says there, the battery is charged. But now, there we go, look. Saves a lot of money buying a new one, a couple of quid in parts. Jobs are good and like a job in the high street. Hope you enjoyed it, uh, hope you got a lot from it, uh, any questions just give me a bell, don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe and uh, lots more to come, see you later.